my heart's beating like 50,000 miles an hour right now and I'm only talking to a camera imagine what I'm like talking to actual people hi guys and welcome back to my channel today I'm doing something completely different it's gonna be very real I'm just gonna tell you what it is okay so <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. So people who know me well will know that I have suffered with depression and anxiety for years. Years. Since I was a teenager basically. And I'm now 22 by the way. And I have been thinking recently about how mental health and mental illness needs to be a more open discussion in order to get rid of the taboo surrounding depression, anxiety, bipolar, BPD, like there's so many out there, so many mental illnesses and mental health struggles that people are going through and I just think that the more people talk about it, the more the stigma surrounding mental illness will go away. But yeah, I just feel like there needs to be a more open discussion about mental health. So. As part of that, I have decided that I am going to start this series of videos on my channel and they're going to be called The Depression Diaries and I'm just going to talk about my mental health, how I cope with it, certain things, you know, it's going to be quite, quite personal but also I think that's what we need in order to break the ice a bit around mental health. So if you don't want to watch it, then just don't watch it. And if you do, then go ahead. It's not going to be triggering or anything like that. I'm going to keep it, keep it PG. But yeah, so this is depression diary number one. Grab yourself a copper. I've got my, my coffee. And uh, we'll dive on in. <laughs> Okay, before we start, I just want to say that these are all personal, they are my opinion. I'm not saying they are apply to everybody, I'm just saying that these are things that I have personally li personally, I have personally, that doesn't even sound like a word anymore. Yeah, personally learnt from my mental illness and my road and my journey or whatever metaphor you want to use. Because this is the first video in this series I thought I'd do 10 things that my mental illness and my mental health struggles have taught me in the long run sort of thing. Yeah, that's that's the gist of it. You've probably read the title. Yeah, I'm just gonna get into it. I've written some things down by the way because I'm really nervous. So if I look down, it's at this. So the first thing that I've learned through my mental health struggles, and I think it's such an important message because I see so many people out there not doing this, it is that your happiness and your recovery is down to you. You can't put your happiness onto somebody else. Your happiness is not somebody else's responsibility. It is your responsibility. I see so many people putting up posts like my boyfriend cured me, my girlfriend is the reason I'm happy, this person is the reason I'm still alive, yada 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 and I just personally feel like that is dangerous, that is not a good mindset to be in because if you put your happiness and your recovery onto somebody else or something else, once that thing or that person is gone, then what do you have? You, you, don't, you don't have anything. So then your mental health will go right back to where it was before. Do you know what I mean? I have fallen into this trap many a time. I have been like, oh, you know, I wouldn't be, a, I wouldn't be around if it wasn't for so-and-so or things like that. And I have come to realise 
maybe in the last year or last two years that no one else will make you happy if you don't choose yourself to be happy and I think that it's finding that happiness from within yourself that then makes you so much more secure because once everything else is taken away from you say say I had a boyfriend and that fell apart and that I was left with nothing if I have had happiness from myself and I was secure from myself and my recovery was me then I would still be able to go through with that recovery and that happiness and that would still be there yeah it would suck the situation you were in would suck but at the end of the day you have you and also I feel like it's very dangerous for a relationship or a friendship if you put your happiness onto someone else because then that is they feel responsible for that and every time they slip up they're going to be like oh no this is going to affect their recovery and that shouldn't be how it is just my opinion just my opinion but yeah i think it's really important to find your independence find your own strength find your own happiness from you that is what i'm trying to say that was a much simpler way of putting it wasn't it the second point I would like to make is that your life with mental illness is going to be different but that doesn't mean that it's over. So I see so many people think their life is over because of their mental illness getting in the way of what they originally wanted and I just think that your mental illness is there, you can't ignore it, you can't ignore it and go on to do what you would had originally planned, but you can deal with your mental illness and find another way around. There is always, always a plan B, and sometimes you have to look at your life and think, right, this is important to me, this is important to me, that is not important to me, and that needs to go, because you need to prioritise things when you have mental illness, and if something is causing you more stress or is causing you anxiety if that's the case you need to get it get rid of it get it out of your life take a break from it it doesn't mean you can't go back to it in the future it just means you need a break from it so say if university or school or even your job if that is causing your mental illness to deteriorate then you need to take a break from it you need to say hey I'm not okay here I need to prioritise myself for a little bit and that's okay. If you had planned to go to university all your life and then you get there and realise that you can't handle it, that's okay, that is fine. There is always a plan B. Don't give up, your life isn't over, you just need to work around it. Okay, the third point is that it's okay to say no to things and not explain yourself. I actually find it very difficult to say no and it's something that I've been struggling with. I usually have about 70 things going on at once because I don't know how to say no. But I am slowly, slowly learning that it's okay to say no and it's okay. People aren't going to be like, oh, Elle didn't want to come to Taco Bell today because she's a snake. No, they're going to be like, oh, that's fine. You have some you time. You... If you need to stay in that day, that's okay. Stay in. If you need to prioritise other things, then that is okay. It is okay to say no. And that leads me on to my next point, that recovery is a long process. It is long and it is bumpy and it is difficult. And I'm not there. I'm not recovered. I don't know if people fully ever do recover and there's some because I just feel like there's going to be always something in the back of your mind but recovery is a long process don't rush yourself don't push yourself too hard because the more you push yourself too hard the worse you're going to get you're going to go one step forward and 25 steps back if you are impatient with yourself then that's where things will start to go wrong you need to learn to be patient with yourself and with your own recovery. That also leads on to my next point that you should never compare your own struggles and your own 
journey to other people's. I have found it applies for me when I have compared my own struggles to people with what I would call situational depression. So if someone has gone through a really hard time and has had depression because of their situation, that is different to having chronic depression and lifelong depression. And when you see other people almost come out of their depression because they've come out of the situation that was making them depressed, then sometimes I have been like, well, why aren't I why aren't I snapping out of it? They managed to do it, why can't I do it? And you're putting yourself down because you're comparing your journey to other people's journeys. And everyone goes through things differently, everyone grieves differently, everyone is happy differently, everyone goes through everything differently. So you cannot compare your own struggles and your own journey to that of others. You can let them inspire you and you can look at it and say, hey, there is a way out of this, there's going to be a positive ending, but you can't let it rush you. You can't let it hinder your own journey. Number six is that it's okay to be sad. If you know me, you'll know I'm not a... It feels weird saying I'm not a sad person, but I have depression. That seems like a big oxymoron. Oxymoron is... Alexa. What does oxymoron mean? Oxymoron is usually defined as conjoining contradictory terms, as in deafening silence. I'm such a happy person on the outside to other people, and I try and be as positive as I can, and really I definitely suppress my own feelings, my own thoughts, and that's not healthy. Let me just tell you that. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's a long road. Um, but it's okay to be sad, and that's something I am learning, that it is okay to feel things. It's okay not to be okay, as cringy as that is. It's so true, and it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say, look, I'm not coping very well right now. Can you help me I could do with a positive influence in my life right now. It's okay. It's okay. Just own you and own what you are going through. Number seven is not everyone will understand what you're going through and that is okay. Not everyone struggles with mental illness. A lot of people do, you're definitely not alone, but not everyone is going to understand and there will be people that will say, oh, just smile a bit more, oh, or just be happy, and they don't understand how mental illness works, and I think the most important thing in that situation is to be patient with them, and maybe explain to them that it is an illness, it is a brain, it's a neurological illness, and people won't understand that, and you ha will have to be patient, and don't let it affect your recovery when people do say things like that, because at the end of the day, there are ignorant people, and we are learning more and more and more about mental illnesses and psychology and things, and I think we know a lot more now than we did 10, 20 years ago. And I'm hoping that in 10 or 20 years, people will be more understanding of mental health issues. Number eight is similar to number seven, and that is that everybody will have an opinion, but you are the only one who knows what is best for you. There will be people, there will be people who say, oh, you shouldn't have medication for depression because you know, it's not a proper illness, or you should have medication because nothing else is working. And at the end of the day, you are the only person who knows what is best for you. And you shouldn't let other people's opinions influence your recovery. You shouldn't let anyone else's opinions influence your decisions. So medication for mental illnesses is still quite taboo. I have had many an argument with people about whether you should have medication or not. I have had medication for depression. I am on it and off it and on it and off it. We've got a love-hate relationship, me and Sertraline. 
Um, and I just think if you know what's best for you, you go with it and you have to learn to ignore the other opinions. You can respect the opinions, but you can also ignore them. Number nine is that you can take pride in the smallest of achievements. I have had many big achievements in my life. That sounds boastful. I didn't mean that to sound boastful. Um, I've climbed Kilimanjaro, I just got a 2-1 in my degree, I've bungee jumped off the highest bungee bridge, is that a thing? I've skydived, I've had many achievements, but I still consider getting out of bed in the morning as an achievement, I consider opening my curtains as an achievement because sometimes it is those little things that take so much more effort than those big things. I have to push myself every single day to do what I do and to me that is the biggest achievement I have ever accomplished. But it is okay to take pride in little things. If you just got out of bed today and that is all you've done, or even if you haven't got out of bed but you have texted someone to say hey I'm not okay. Whatever you have done today, take pride in it because you're still here and you are, you've survived another day and you can keep going, keep doing what you need to do in order to survive. And my final point is that your mental illness does not define you. I am not depression, I'm not, hi, I'm Elle with depression. I am Elle, I'm Elena, I'm Eleanor, whatever you want to call me. I have depression. I am not depression. I have anxiety. I am not my anxiety. And you are not defined by your depression. Your journey is not defined by your depression or whatever mental illness you have. You are not defined by it. You have to find things in life that make you you. So I have so many things that make me me. I have a weird accent. I get told they have a weird accent all the time. I have my exercise routine. I love exercising. I have my family. I have so much more than just depression and I think that is... that was my air freshener. And I think that is a really important thing is that you are not defined by your mental illness. So that is my 10 things I have learned from life with mental illness. And I just wanted to stress again that those are personal things that I've learned. They might not apply to everybody. You can, like I said, you can ignore them and respect them. Or you can take them on board and, I don't know, do whatever you want with them. But I think it's definitely important to open up this discussion about mental health. To raise awareness of it. To make it become a norm that everyone is okay talking about their feelings. I struggle with it. It's why I'm talking to a camera, not a real person. But I just hope that it can reduce the stigma. So yeah, that is all for today, guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And yeah, I'm gonna try and do these maybe once or twice a month, as well as get back into my normal routine with my other videos. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I was taking me time and that's okay. So yeah, that's all for today guys. See you next time. Stay wonderful.